What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking the sequel season to The Haunting of Hill House, except this time, similar cast, brand new story. It's The Haunting of Bly Manor. I need you in the comments down below. This review is spoiler free. Thanks to Netflix for sending me these screeners. Stay tuned because Friday we're talking spoilers, but right now, let's get into it. After a tragic death, Henry hires a young American nanny to care for his orphaned niece and nephew who reside at Bly Manor with Chef Owen, groundskeeper Jamie, and housekeeper Mrs. Gross. First of all, I was so excited for this season. I loved Haunting of Hill House, one of the first series reviews I had ever done on this channel, and uh, one of the first horror-centric shows that I had just fallen in love with. I thought it was terrifying. I thought it was so well done. Mike Flanagan, the director of countless incredible horror films, uh, oversaw that season, and it was awesome. This season very different, and I mean very different. Similar cast, a couple of returning members portraying new characters, think American Horror Story, and Mike Flanagan returns to tell this story as well, uh, directs a few of the episodes. But my goodness, Bly Manor, it's just a completely different story where Haunting of Hill House was more family-centric, focused on these brothers and sisters returning to this home. Haunting of Bly Manor is more a romantic story, and not just one romance, countless romances being held within and even outside of the manor, and that's where the conflict between the characters spawn from, but then of course, you have to look at the fact that it's a scary story. We're waiting to be terrified. Austin, is this as scary as Haunting of Hill House? My simple answer is no. It's not as scary. I know it's been talked about behind the scenes. Well, we're going to make this the scariest. It's not even close in my book. Now, does that mean it's a bad season of television? Absolutely not. But it is one that you have to be patient with. Where Haunting of Hill House gave us a couple of uh, hard hitters in the first few episodes. And I'm not just talking about scares. I'm talking about revelations with the characters. This season really takes its time. And I'm talking, I'm three episodes in. Uh, we had gotten a couple of scares up to that point, but I'm trying to figure out what is, and this sounds kind of mean, what's the point of all of this? How is it all going to come together? And how is my mind going to be boggled like it was in the first season? Because you remember the hard-hitting moments in season one, I mean, they came quick and and they were furious, and they were scattered throughout the entire season. Not until we get to episode four, and really episode five, these were the episodes that held these revelations for these characters. Here was where we finally started to get answers. And if you're not patient, and I understand why you wouldn't be, um, you may turn this off and say, this isn't near as good as season one. Uh, but that's just the way the story unfolds. And it's not necessarily the fault of the story. It's more so the fact that it's taking uh, notes and story points from so many different Henry James novels. You not only have the turn of the screw, which is said in one of the episodes, so I'm like, oh, they said the name of the, of the book, but it's also kind of known that's what they're going for. You also have the romance of certain old clothes. You have the jolly corner. You have so many different stories that they're taking elements from. And again, I come back to my slight criticism of there may have been too much at points that they were trying to pull from. But once the story, and I love this about Mike Flanagan, he's very patient with his filmmaking sometimes. Once the story starts to come together and you get those revelations, and I'm talking uh, revelations that may even be more shocking than Haunting of Hill House. I kid you not. Your jaw will be on the floor. Your mind will be blown. And I'm not going to lie. There were a couple of predictable moments foreshadowing that may have been too on the nose with, say, a, a character death or this is about to pop up and scare us. Oh, it's a jump scare. And you guys know me. I like my jump scares to be well thought out. And not all of them were well thought out in this show. And because of that... I wasn't as scared watching Haunting of Bly Manor. But this is less about being scared and more about the audience, aka us, feeling uneasy about the story itself and just 
trapped, like some of these characters feel throughout the season, trapped within this story. It's almost like we can't leave. I have a feeling a lot of you guys are going to binge this show uh, from top to bottom because you will feel like you won't be able to do anything else until you get these revelations that the characters get, until you start getting these answers that were slowly given to us, uh, being shown to us, not told to us, which I loved. Not a lot of exposition until a certain episode. I believe it was the episode prior to the finale. There's an episode where it gives you a little bit too much. I liked the fact that we were uh, getting all of this through the story prior to that, but even that didn't bother me as much because there was so much to get through. And that's the thing. When you get through the first three episodes, it's a compelling story. You love the characters, some of the best acting I've seen all year, but I'm sitting back going, there has to be a twist. There has to be something to the story that pushes it further like Haunting of Hill House did. And as soon as we got to that episode, that's when we started to realize there is so much more, not a little bit, so much more to Haunting of Bly Manor than you will expect or anticipate. And that's when this season really started to come into its own. It requires patience, absolutely. And I feel like certain audience members will be extremely disappointed in the fact that it's just not as scary. Even my wife, she was kind of the test, because I, I don't get as scared. Haunting of Hill House, there's one moment that really scared me, but I don't get as scared as my wife. She got a little spooked, and there were a few moments that got her, especially when it comes to the imagery. The imagery? Some, some of the demons here? Some of the ghosts? Terrifying, okay? But in terms of actually being scared, she wasn't as scared as I anticipated her to be. But you know what? That's okay. That doesn't mean this season isn't good. I do want to hit on the cast really quick. We have Henry Thomas returning, playing Henry Wingrave. He is the uncle. He's kind of the guy over this situation. You don't really know what's up with him. There's a mystery there, and it's definitely one that has slowly uncovered Victoria Pedretti as the American Nanny. She is kind of the main character, especially throughout the first three episodes. We're really focused on her until the story starts to... um put other characters at the forefront and tell us the whys and the hows of how they fit into the story. Now, the kids, the kids are hilarious because they're so polite and they are so good in terms of their performances, but I will just say this, they have to do a lot more than you anticipate. And Amelie Smith, Benjamin Ainsworth, these kids are going a long way. At first, it's like, okay, they may be a bit over the top, but you start to realize how deep and intimate they have to go. Chef Owen may have been my favorite character. He's just the most likable guy. And there are so many moments within this uh, family of sorts, yes, but again, it's less focused on family than Hill House, where they come together. A lot of these scenes took place in the kitchen. They have a laugh. There are sweet moments. There are intimate moments. And it turns out that that's just the setup for the next extremely creepy moment. This show is all about sacrifice. This show is all about love and the importance of that. It incorporates elements of the classic ghost story, a very uh, gothic kind of horror being portrayed here. That's what we get with something like Bly Manor, exploring the ins and out, the cracks and crevices of this mansion. Very creepy. The set design, outstandingly just full of chills. And that's the thing, again, it's all about the imagery. It's all about the camera movement. It's all about the shocking moments. So many shocking moments. And I hate to keep drawing comparisons to The Haunting of Hill House because it's just a different story altogether. But I really hope you can go in and expect a very different story here. One that you do have to be patient for. But I promise you, once you get into the middle of the season, that's when Everything starts to pay off. Everything comes together. And by the time you get to the end of that episode, and I won't say which one, but it's in the middle of the season, that episode, you will say, I am so glad I was able to stay in tune with this story uh, because that's the point where you sit back and say, it is worth it. Now, there were a few romances that I didn't care as much about. I just think certain elements took up too much screen time, and again, some, I'd say very few of the shocking moments, 
I saw coming, uh, and that's not necessarily a great thing, but it's so well put together. Mike Flanagan does such an incredible job with the cast. I think all of the casting was on point. Have they even talked about Oliver Jackson Cohen, uh, who was very different, very good in this show. Kate Siegel, everyone was so good. You have centuries of dark secrets of love and loss, uh, and they're waiting to be uncovered by this chilling and incredible gothic romance story. Again, expect the unexpected with this show. When your questions are finally beginning to get answered, I think that's when everyone is going to sit back and say, I'm so glad I stuck around with The Haunting of Bly Manor, and I thoroughly enjoyed this season of television. I need you guys in the comments down below. Before I give you guys my score, thanks for tuning in. Come back later on this week. We're going to be talking spoilers and all of those revelations and ghosts planted throughout the story. As for my score, uh, I am going with an 85% for The Haunting of Bly Manor. Not what I anticipated at all, but I really, really enjoyed myself. I thought it was a great season of horror gothic horror television with some great characters, some great relationships, uh, some interesting romances, and some really spooky moments with great imagery and just awesome special effects. If you're asking me, Austin, which one do you like more, Hill House or Bly Manor? I still have to go Hill House. I think that show uh, was oh so special, but this stands on its own as something completely different, and I love that. So uh, be sure to tune back in. More to come on Bly Manor this week. So many more videos, lots of Netflix reviews. That's what we do on this channel every weekend, weekend. Appreciate you guys for watching. I can't wait for you guys to watch this on Friday. See you soon.